And welcome to the UK's number one retro gaming podcast show. This is Retro Asylum, episode 51 and a half. I'm your host, Dean Swain. And in this episode, we're going to be taking a look and listen to arcade music. Yes, that's right. I've done a few music specials now. Um, and this one is going to be slightly different because I've got the rest of the team involved, or at least most of them, those who could spare the time. So, you've probably been wondering... Where the hell have I been? Well, unfortunately, there's nothing exciting to tell you. It's just been the usual mundane, go to work, come home, go to work, come home, go to work. You get the idea, guys. I hate my job, as you probably gathered from the previous episodes. So, other than that, what have I been up to? Well, recently, I managed to get a soft-modded Xbox. A nice little crystal one. So, it looks the part. And my god, CoinOps 5, what a program. There is plenty on there to keep me going for years. I mean, it's even got me thinking about flogging the, you know, my old collection. Not that I'm going to do that, although I could do with the money, to be honest, but I just can't do it. Some of the emulation on there, or at least 98% of it, is top-notch, and I've been playing some classic arcade games, and that is what has inspired this episode. So yeah, unlike previous music specials that I've done, you remember the ZX Spectrum and the Amiga episodes, well, this one focuses on the arcade music, and it also, uh, I've got some of the guys involved, my colleagues, the co-hosts of Retro Asylum. So yeah, why not get on with the show, Swainy? People don't want to listen to you ramble. Okay, so the first track is an all-time classic, and it comes from a great arcade game. The game itself is very playable, very hard, one of my all-time favourites. It's Rastan Saga. Go 
guys, I better check the door for a draft because my hair is standing on end after listening to that. That is such an amazing track. Um, I wanted to start the show off with something you know with, that gets everyone pumped up for this, and I think that track does that. It certainly made you want to play that first level of Rastan, without a doubt. Now, as you know, a lot of arcade game music got drowned out by other machines, and one of those machines guilty of drowning out other machines' music was Afterburner 2, especially the sit-down model. It was... Every version I played of it, anyway, everywhere I went, fun fairs and arcade halls, you know, amusement arcades down at the beach and, you know, when you're on holiday. Afterburner 2 was always set so loud, so I don't know if there was an option to change the volume on it or what, but from my experience, it was a very, very loud game. And this next track is from that game. It's called Red Out. I think it's from Stage 4. Don't quote me on that. I'm not Shakespeare. But let's take a listen to it. I think, again, you'll agree, an amazing, amazing track.
as you know, a few weeks ago we had our very first Retro Mania, which is a Retro Asylum event that Andy had set up. And whilst I was there, I got speaking to Matt Denaris, who, as you well know, he is a big music person. He knows all the technical stuff. He's a musician himself. He's made tracks. He's had tracks published. And I got speaking to Matt, and I was mentioning the idea of this episode and he said to me he couldn't really think of a tune um, mainly because as I said before just before the Afterburner track that a lot of music gets drowned out in arcades so he said to me he'd have a think about it and this is what he got back to me with so I'm going to hand over to Matt he's going to explain what this track is and why he likes it Cowbell we need more cowbell in this world give me more cowbell Paperboy Starts off with the cowbell, funky little drums, funky little melodies, keys. Got that real sort of lounge jazz sound to it. Clearly been made by quite a competent musician, by a competent keyboard player. The melodies, very, very jazzy, very, very free-flowing. Made a bit of Herbie Hancock in there. Just brilliant. The game, it's a pure classic, isn't it? It never really translated that great to the home systems because you didn't have the handlebars. The wonderful analog controls from the arcade. You got the little button to shoot your your magazines and your newspapers out, and the grip shift on the handlebars. Absolutely fantastic, brilliant game. But you know what? All about these. with an Atari published arcade game I'm now going to move on to a game that I didn't get to play in the arcade until probably two or three years after its release but I had been playing a Spectrum version and it came with an audio cassette or was the music just on the other side of the cassette I can't remember I'm pretty sure it's a separate cassette um, and US Gold done this a couple of times with arcade games one of them was Outrun and the game we're going to listen to now is 720 Degrees. Now, this audio capture is actually from that tape that I own. So, the sound might be slightly not as sharp as some of the others that we've played and will be playing in this episode. But I just thought for the actual retro nostalgia, it's going to come from the tape. So, this is 720 Degrees. There's a few different tracks on this. I'm going to let the whole lot play. Um... The arcade game is great, it's another one of those games where the volume is always up loud and with this kind of music it's no wonder.
I think we can solely blame 720 for my phobia of wasps and bees. Anyone who's played the game will know what I'm talking about. Right, let's go over to Anthony, also known as Uniforex, who describes and talks about some of his favourite arcade game tracks. Hi everyone, this is Uniforex. When I was asked to pick just a few arcade titles and say a little bit about why I liked them, I thought it was going to be fairly difficult. There's so many great arcade games around, but the theme of this episode is arcade music. So I thought it was obvious that I just needed to quickly think about the game music that jumped into my mind straight away. And so here's my selection of, in my mind, instantly recognisable music, in no particular order, and I've chosen a mix of genres, so hopefully at least one will be to your taste. Now the first game that I've chosen requires the player to control a character that must work its way vertically up the screen while avoiding hordes of cute looking enemies. It's bright, colourful and cute. It was ported to numerous home computer systems including the Spectrum, C64, Amiga and Atari ST. I've got to confess that I've mainly played the arcade version under emulation but owned it on the Amiga and it was one of my favourite games of the time. It's a sequel, although differed from its predecessor in that its predecessor wasn't a scroller and was fixed to a single screen play area. The game was produced in 1987 by Tato and the idea of the game was to make it through 10 themed islands collecting diamonds preferably in the correct order on each level for bonuses. It is of course Rainbow Island. I like Rainbow Island. Well, the, the music is amongst the catchiest little pieces of music ever. Yes, it's a little bit repetitive, but I think because it goes over that same piece of catchy music over and over again, that's why it sticks in your mind, along with its predecessor, Bubble Bobble, uh, to a similar style of music. I thought of Rainbow Island's first over Bubble Bobble, which is actually a little strange because I probably played Bubble Bobble just as much. Uh, but I think perhaps Rainbow Islands has a bit more depth to it. The mechanics of firing at the enemies with rainbows and then being able to run up and over those rainbows or, or jump onto them and send them crashing down into the enemies below is quite a, a novel and unique, unique idea. And overall it's just a really cute, fun, bright arcade platformer that entertains on all levels. My second game takes a departure from the platform genre and ventures into the realm of the vertical shoot 'em up. 
The title also appeared on home computer systems such as the Spectrum, C64, Amiga and ST, although having tried most of those, I would say none of them were quite as good as the arcade version. It was developed by Capcom in 1987 and takes place, like Rainbow Islands, over a vertical scrolling screen. This time, the cute characters and bright coloured backdrops are replaced with fighter planes, seascapes and it's generally a brilliant fast action shooter. The game is set in World War II in the Pacific and improves over its predecessor in terms of graphics and sound. It's 1943, the Battle of Midway. Sorry, I got a little bit caught up in the moment there. I love this game. Some games have the balance of bullets too high and some too low, and I think 1943 gave you just enough chance to avoid the incoming shrapnel. The music has a certain strum to it that gives that flying into battle military feel, and the smooth waves of incoming fighter planes give just the right sense of panic and compulsion to mash the fire button as fast as you can. I think it could have done with a few more power-ups, but overall, it's a good game, and if you're after something even more intense with over-the-top power-ups, maybe take Dodon Patchy for a run. Let's see if you can guess what my next choice is. that was a toughie. Yes, it's the pizza-eating, crime-busting, shell-sporting, teenage mutant ninja or hero turtles. Released in 1989 by Konami, the game came in a two-player or much more exciting four-player version, in which you could choose to play as Leonardo, or for the benefit of Steve Benry, the blue one, Michelangelo, who was the orange one, Donatello, the purple one, or Raphael the Red. Each character had its own weapon and I always preferred Donatello who fought with a staff. I thought maybe he had a longer reach but perhaps I was just imagining that. You have to rescue Splinter and April O'Neil from the evil clutches of Shredder and the whole thing turns out to be a wonderful brawl against the bad guys. Enemies can be beaten using your weapons or thrown across the screen. It's a thoroughly enjoyable beat em up and the music is well suited to the action. Turtle Power! My final choice of music comes from an all-time favourite of mine, Salamander. Released in 1986, this was a spin-off of the wonderful shoot em up Gradius. Two players could play in this game, and I spent many hours playing it in the arcade with a friend. 
The music featured is from level 2 of the game, having defeated the boss of level 1, the brain-like creature whose eye you must shoot out in order to defeat it. You are thrust into an asteroid field to voyage on to the next boss, and the music here, along with the switch from horizontal to vertical scrolling, gave a wonderful feeling of progression and moving onwards and upwards after defeating the level 1 boss. That's the four pieces of music that came instantly into my mind. Let us know yours on the Retro Asylum forums after the show. Or you can tweet me on Twitter, at Uniforix. Thanks very much for Uniforix there for some great, great choices. And one of those games he mentions, which he didn't play, let's just slam it in there right now because it is a classic. In it goes. Bubble Bobble. transported back to 1987 to a kebab shop down Well Street Market in Hackney called Adams whenever I hear that track. I think the good health guy put a brick through his window eventually. Anyway, let's get going to the 1990s now and this is Ali's choice. That's Ali the Retro Hunter. And he chose a track from Daytona. Now this is when Sega started adding lyrics to their songs. I find them a little bit cheesy but, you know, if that was what you was playing these are the games and the songs that are going to stick in your head. So this is called Let's Go Away. <laughs> Yeah. 
Ah. From one classic Sega game to another, although now we are rewinding back to the 80s. This is one of two tracks we're playing from the classic that is Outrun. This is my choice, Splash Wave. <laughs>
we've taken from the arcade game Outrun, and that is the track I use whenever I play that game. So, the next choice comes from Damien Green, and again, Damien hasn't had time to record any words for us, unfortunately, but this is a great, great track for a great, great game. It's R-Type Level 1, and just before I do play the tune, can I just mention a book that has been recently published online by a guy called Bob Pape, who was the programmer of the ZX Spectrum conversion. Guys, I please urge you to download this book, give it a read, even if you've not played the ZX Spectrum version or you have no interest in the ZX Spectrum version. There is gossip, background material on other conversions of the game and you just get a, a look into how games were developed back in the day and all the shady going-ons between publishers and what have you. Anyway, back to the track. This is R-Type, level one. Guys, I've just realised I didn't give you the name of that book. It's called Look Behind You. Please do check that out. It's a free download in PDF format. You can print it out. Honestly, it is well worth a read. So, it's time to go back to Outrun. And this has got to be one of the most well-known arcade theme tunes ever. And this is Foggy's Choice. It is, of course, Magical Sound Shower.
that was Magical Sound Shower, taken from Sega's arcade classic from 1986, Outrun. Such a instant recognisable tune. It's superb. Often have that on in the car. Even I drive a smart car. Sad, eh? Right, I guess we should have a listen to what Andy has to say. What tune has he picked and from what game? Let's find out. Hi there guys, this is Andy and my favourite arcade game music comes from Street Fighter 2 by Capcom and my favourite music from this game is Guile's level, Guile's theme in particular and before I tell you why I like this theme so much, let me quickly explain that I love this game, I think it's my personal favourite game, it's a masterpiece basically, Capcom done an amazing job on this, it still holds up pretty well to this day, the game had amazing graphics, amazing gameplay, and one of the things that stood out and made it different was that each level had its own theme tune, and each theme tune really related to the character that the uh, theme was based on, and I think in particular, Guile's theme really captured who Guile really was. Uh, the music is sort of like a really late 80s to early 90s sort of feel. It kind of has that sort of movie soundtrack. It's really catchy, and if you look on YouTube, apparently Guile's theme goes with anything. And I, I love this track. I, I think it's amazing, and I still hum it to this day. And guys, yeah, listen and enjoy this. See you guys next time. <laughs> Street Fighter 2 there, Giles theme, which was Andy's choice. Andy being quite an expert on the game, he always totally embarrasses me if I try and play against him because I'm absolutely rubbish at the game. Any more than three buttons in an arcade machine and my brain goes to mush, I just can't cope with it. Anyway, moving on, and we're going to pass over now to Mr. Sid, also known as Sam, to his mum and dad. And his choice is quite an older arcade game. I was quite surprised because Sam is fairly younger than most of us on the team, apart from Glenn, I believe. Anyway, I'm going to hand over to him and he can explain why he likes his track so much. Growing up in a seaside town, I probably should have been more into arcade games, but I was always more into the home computers. I do, however, have great memories of arcades. The cigarette smoke, the flashing lights, a place to hang out with your mates. Fighting to be heard over all the noise was the music from the arcade machines. There is one arcade game piece of music which has stuck in my head ever since I heard it. It was 1990 and we were holidaying in a caravan park in Weymouth. We went with another family who had a boy the same age as me. Hanging out with your parents was pretty uncool at that age, so we spent the whole holiday in the games room. It was a tiny room with a pool table in the middle and a few arcade machines around the edges. The one that grabbed our attention was called Kung Fu Master. It looked old compared to the more recent cabinets, but was great fun and sounded really cool. 
Released by IRM in 1984, Kung Fu Master is a scrolling beat-em-up that I'm sure was the inspiration for others in the genre, like Double Dragon. You went from right to left, and people come at you from either side, so you have to kick and punch them. It was all about the timing, concentration, and getting into a rhythm. The gameplay is pretty frantic, and it had a piece of music with it that complemented this style of gameplay really well. So, pretty much all of this holiday was spent playing Kung Fu Master, so whenever I hear the music for it nowadays, it puts a smile on my face, and I immediately think of that summer holiday back in 1990. Such a great choice there from Sam. Not only is the music memorable, but those sound effects, you know, early samples like that on an arcade machine, they, that always stood out for me. Unfortunately, I played the ZX Spectrum version first of all, and anyone who has played that will know that the beeper was absolutely screwing his head off with an awful rendition of that music. And the actual game itself on the Spectrum was awful, really, really terrible. Such a poor conversion, such a shame. Okay, so we've just hit the hour mark, and I think it's time to wrap this show up, as it's a music special. I don't want to go on and bore you all. I know you're all too busy playing GTA 5 this week. So, I just want to make some thank yous, because, to cut a long story short, we recently hit a financial problem in hosting the show, due to the popularity, the hosting fees, for the next year, which had to be paid with our current host in one lump sum were quite big and you know, all us guys we're just normal people we've got normal jobs this is not our job to do this this is just a hobby which we love doing but unfortunately you know times are hard you, you guys know the score out there um, money is you know it's hard to find at the moment so I've got to say a massive massive thank you to Dino Dini the programmer of the kickoff series and goal who we've previously interviewed on the show he's come to our rescue he's, he's paid for the hosting so you know thank you mate we really really do appreciate it very very much i also want to thank the regular um people who finance the show your names are always on the covers thank you very much for that and i want to thank the hosts you know um, like I say, I've not had time to play everyone's music, unfortunately, because of, you know, this. like I say, this sort of format, I don't think it should go on too much. And, uh, you know, if you are interested in this kind of show and you, you want to hear more, or you want to maybe have your choice of music on the show, give us a shout. Get on the forum. You can contact me on Twitter, at Dean Swain. And, you know... Get involved, we'd love to hear your choices. So guys, again, if you want to hear a follow-up to this podcast, please do get in touch and let me know what you want to hear on the show. So, I'm going to leave you now with one more track, and it's from a classic game. I enjoy it very much, I know most of the team do. Um, And this song is actually very mellow for it. For a song that comes from an action game, I think it's very laid back, so I think it's a nice song to end the show with. It is, of course, Sega's Shinobi. (laughs) 